Welcome back to JB Reviews. As you guys know, I have this 2023 GMC Sierra. It has a Duramax diesel, and you can kind of see it's a little white outside, so we got some snow yesterday, and it's time to really start thinking about the winter time and how to really protect your truck for this season. Now, as you saw in the title, GM does have a cold weather mode with this truck. So I'm gonna go over that with you in this video, but if you do plan on buying a diesel and you do live in these colder climates, like I'm in Utah, you have to think about how you're gonna protect this truck. A lot of the reasons why people have problems with their cars is because they don't read the owner's manual. And number two, they don't know how to protect their investment. So GM does give you some pretty good information in the owner's manual. So we're gonna go through some of that stuff on there. And then we also are gonna go over some of the features you have to really help with overall protection and just keeping your truck in top shape. But let's go ahead and start with the owner's manual with the cold weather mode. For 2023, GMC and Chevy do have a cold weather mode now. And all it basically does is in very low temperatures, a cold weather message may display on the driver information center. The engine speed, transmission, shift patterns, and cabin fan speed may operate differently to enable the vehicle to warm up quicker. You can manually override the cabin fan speed in cold weather mode. So that's pretty cool. I had no idea there was a name for that system. My Ram truck has something similar to it because whenever it got really cold and I drove it, you could tell that there was something different about the truck overall. So that system is there really to get the engine at peak temperature because that's gonna get you better fuel economy and it's gonna help protect the engine. So something else you have to consider. Now, not all GM trucks have this. So one thing you have to understand is you do have some grill shutters and actually mine are actually already closed in there. You can see that it's completely closed off. If I were to start the truck, you guys would basically see those things open and close. So something that you have to understand is if you do plan on driving in the snow and it's probably around 18 degrees or lower, you probably are gonna to wanna to put that winter front grill on the front of this truck. So that's something that I am gonna show you guys in this video too, uh, how to put that on. It should be pretty easy. And if your truck doesn't have the grill shutters, I would still recommend using that just because it's gonna help your engine stay warm. And if snow gets pitted inside of this grill, those grill shutters could turn on a check engine light with your truck. So you wanna make sure you keep this thing completely clean. And if there is any snow in here, you wanna to try to remove as much as possible so you don't damage those fins. Now let's talk about remote start. Most trucks today do have an option, even on lower trim levels for remote start. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna see if we can see those grill shutters. So let's start it up right now. Okay, so they didn't open. I may have to start the truck actually inside. So let me go grab my wife and see if we can see if those things will open up for us. All right, so I have my wife inside the truck. Let's see if we get the suckers to move. Okay, nothing yet. I guess it's really cold. It's probably like 30 degrees outside, so they're probably not gonna open. Okay, so they're not gonna open, unfortunately. I was hoping I could show it to you. Okay, so they're not gonna start, okay. So, but again, if it wasn't as cold, you would see them open up and it would allow air to come in. And probably while you get on the highway, it probably would happen. But let's go ahead and talk about remote start really quickly. So as you guys know, if you do have a remote start on your truck and you have a heated steering wheel or heated seats, it will turn those features on if you remote start it, if it's really cold outside. I do notice it. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll open the garage door, remote start it, and then let it run for like a couple minutes. And when I get inside the truck, the steering wheel is nice and warm and my seat's nice and warm. Now, I'm not sure if the passenger side does it, but I do know on the driver's side it does. And you do have an engine block heater. I am gonna pull this out here in a second, but you can plug it in here. Um, like right now, because the truck is so dirty, I am gonna let it sit out here in the driveway. And I could plug it in right up here. And I'll do that for you guys in a second. But before we do that, let's talk about the high idle. If you wanna turn on your high idle, there is an option for it. So your truck has to have the option. So just keep that in mind. Also, the truck obviously has to be on. So you have to start it and you really have to get inside for it to come on. So you have to turn on the parking brake. It's an electronic one right here. So you push the button and all you have to do, the cruise control does not have to be on too. 
But all you have to do is just push down on your cruise control to set it. And it'll also turn it off too. So all you have to do is just hit set. I try to push up to see if it'll do it, but you have to push down to turn it on or turn it off. And it basically idles up to, what is that? Was that 1200 RPMs? Yeah, 1200 RPMs. Now, one thing I would like to see is them allow you to go up to like 1500 RPMs. I know in the Rams, the Cummins, you can go up to about 1500 RPMs and you can set it how you want. So it's not just on or off. You can set it as high as you want or as low as you want. But all in all, you still have a high idle. So that'll help heat up the engine and get the truck at operating temp. So if I were to keep it on, let's see something real quick. I really want to show you those grill shutters. And it's not that loud either. But yeah, you can see those grill shutters do not want to open, man. They do not want to open. But yeah, all I can say is I do like the fact that I have a high idle. Again, I do park the truck in the garage, so I'm not really in need to use these features. However, let's pop the hood and talk about maintenance on this diesel. Now let's talk about oil. I'm going to go over to the side here so you guys can see what this truck calls for. So this calls for a 15W40. Now, that's not a synthetic oil. That's gonna be a conventional oil, and it's gonna be a thicker oil too, in terms of viscosity. So here's what I recommend. If you live in colder climates, your dealer is not gonna know this because I tested my dealer and they filled my test. In the winter time, you're supposed to run a 5W40 if you live in colder climates. Now, obviously, if it's gonna get down to like 30 degrees as the coldest, then you're probably good running a 15W40. But if you get down below 20 degrees, especially when it's really cold in the winter time, like in the morning time, when it's like below 20 degrees or if it's in, you know, even a negative digits, you better run 5W40 because this 15W40 takes a lot longer to run through the engine. And even if you're using the engine block heater and things like that, the oil sits in the oil pan typically. So it's gonna take it more time to run through the system. So I strongly recommend that you get an idea of when you're gonna need your next oil change. And if it's coming close in the fall time, I would just go ahead and run a 5W40 full synthetic oil. This is my personal opinion because your dealership's not gonna know to do that. At least the one I went to, they didn't know. And so all I can tell you is you will damage this engine if you start up and just go and some people don't know that some people think oh these newer engines are pretty much bulletproof and they really are but it does take you to take the extra steps to protect them when it gets really cold now you obviously have to be careful what oil you put in your truck in the winter time and you also have to be careful what diesel you put inside of your truck too so in colder climates most diesel stations do treat their diesel for the winter time there's a diesel number one, and then there's a diesel number two. You never use diesel number two in the wintertime. You always use diesel number one because that's the pre-treated diesel. So in the event that you have a local place, I would strongly recommend asking them, do they treat their diesel in the wintertime? That way you don't have any gelling or anything like that happening. I would also recommend running some additive, like for the wintertime too, if they don't, or if you just have a feeling that they don't know what they're talking about, I would just have a little bit on hand and I just put a little bit inside the tank every fill up. That way you don't have to worry about any gelling. And something that GM does recommend is that you do not use a biodiesel above 5% in the wintertime. Most stations know that too, so you probably won't run into that issue, but it's still good to ask before you fill up your tank. Something to note about diesel number one, in cold weather, the fuel filter may become clogged by wax naturally present in the fuel. To unclog it, move the vehicle to a warm garage area and allow the filter to warm up. The filter may need to be replaced if you do have this happen though. Alrighty, so here it is. Let's talk about your engine block heater. I've already mentioned it a couple times, so I figure it's time to go ahead and plug it in. So GM does something pretty cool. They do give you an actual plug for it. And I'm gonna show you something I strongly recommend that you do if you're gonna use this because when I have my RAM, I will be honest, I did something really stupid a couple times. So if you're gonna use this plug, I strongly recommend that you run it on top of your mirror like this. That way, when you get inside the truck, I almost say put it right here. That way you remember that you have your truck plugged in because when you go to plug in here to your house, 
you don't want to forget about it. And then all of a sudden you're pulling this out and potentially damaging the plug. So I think running it up and over is the best way to do it. And I do use an orange power plug too. So the odds of you forgetting are probably slim to none. But it's still a good idea to just be prepared because if your wife's driving the truck, she'll at least see that this is hanging up there. Because if you are parked in the garage, because I mean, even though I said you don't need to use this, it does get cold inside the garage. So it may not be a bad idea to keep the engine block nice and warm, but tonight I'm gonna park it out here because it's really dirty. And so with that being said, I'm probably gonna plug it in, but I should be able to see the plug. But if you're in a rush, sometimes things just, you know, go over your head. So let's go ahead and plug it in and let's just see if there's a uh, reminder inside on the display to let you know that it's plugged in too. All right, so you have a three prong on this side to plug into and there you go. So I would strongly recommend if you are gonna do this to you know, use the correct size. It's not really recommended that you you know, do your cords like this because you could start a fire, but just for this test purpose, I'm just doing it real quickly. But let's see if it does show anything on the screen that you are plugged in. Oh, well, it shows my hood's open. Let me close the hood, actually. Hold on. Well, that's again. So there is a prompt for ice. So it does say ice possible driver's care. And let's see if I put it. Oh, there it is. All right. So as you can see, I still have it plugged in. And no prompt has pretty much come up. So you can see. If you do forget for any reason, because sometimes again, when life's happening, you forget things. You will see that cord. And if you don't see it, if you have the 360 camera, you'll definitely see it right there. So again, it's just something I would recommend that you do if you do use your engine block heater. And yeah, it's just a good thing to have up in the event that you forget that it's there. So one thing to note is GM does not recommend that you use the block heater if you do park your truck in a garage or a carport um, and most people know this but if you use the engine block here this could help you get better fuel economy because it does keep that engine warm for you while it's cold outside before i show you the winter grill i want to just go over one last thing as i mentioned you're supposed to clean out any snow that's in the grill that way you don't damage the grill shutters you also want to clean any snow out of the wheels because you could damage the brakes and if you go down the road and there's snow like inside the wheel, your truck's gonna ride horribly because it just throws the wheels off balance and it's, it's a terrible feeling. So make sure you clean out the wheels too on the back end of them. And also if there's any snow or ice up here, you wanna clean that out too because you could damage the motor for the windshield wipers. Most people know this too, if it's gonna snow and you know it's gonna snow, put the windshield wipers up because they will stick to the windshield and pretty much um, damage the windshield wipers. But let's go ahead and look at this winter grill. They do provide directions and then they do have, um, you know, different installations because the Nolly SLT and SLE are going to have different designs. So I basically have the SLT uh, grill. So that's the direction I'm going to follow. Now, as far as step one goes, you're supposed to center the grill cover on the front and then push the plastic hooks inside the grill slots and then repeat for all hooks to fully engage and then make sure all the clips remain engaged during installation the cover should be stretched to a tight fit but properly installed so i'm going to install it for you and just show you how it looks but i figured maybe i'll do a time lapse for you that way you don't have to like watch me do this and i don't want to hold the camera obviously either This winter front grill is so much better than my Rams. I did a video on that one and maybe I'll put it into this one, but it covered my camera, what you can see here. GM thought it through a little bit better. And 
I like that air can still get on the sides of this because I never mentioned this on my Ram, it fogged up my headlight. So I took that thing off and on the Rams, they do give you little like pockets that you can open up, but even with them open, they still would fog up. So I just didn't deal with it anymore. But I like that this one does allow it to breathe a little bit. So yeah, I might leave it on there actually. Um, but I don't know, it's not that cold out here. So if it was like high of 20, I'd probably leave it on, but you don't have to open the hood to do it. And yeah, it took me what? Probably like five minutes. And you know we have to talk about towing. So do not use the winter cover if towing a trailer in conditions above zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The vehicle may overheat if the radiator is covered while towing. And if you use a snow plow, don't use a winter cover either. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to subscribe, turn the bell notifications on, and I will see you in the next video.